Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This is going to be a little bit different, like a lot of my videos have been recently. This is definitely not going to be a tutorial. It's going to be more of a demonstration, and it's a demonstration of a project that I worked on a long time ago in Godot Engine, or Godot Engine, whichever you call it. I actually made a crochet app, so it's not a game, uh, but it is a mobile application. It's, a, it's an Android app. It's published on Google Play. I think the last time I checked, it was 2,500 plus downloads. And I, I'm not sure if it's crossed 3,000 yet or not, uh, but it's up on Google Play. Uh, this is definitely not an ad. This is definitely not an attempt to get people to download it. There's no monetization with it. I'm not really getting any benefit from this project. It was just fun to do. It taught me a lot about publishing an application to the Play Store, and maybe I can talk about that in another another video, but I did want to walk through the code for the project and share the GitHub. So I'll have a link in the description to a GitHub if you just want to go to the source code and check out uh, the, the tool. But this is this is what it looks like on the Play Store. And then on this screen, this is what it looks like in Godot. So not everything about this project is perfect. And honestly, I don't remember all the details of this project just because it's been, I think it's been a couple years since I worked on it. But I figured I could just pull it up and I could walk through it and I could just point out some things, show you how it works. And then once you check out the source code, maybe you can gain some information from it. One of the main things I want to do is talk about what I might would do differently if I worked on it now. So, and the first thing is maybe the organization of, of kind of the scenes. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So I'll run it. Apparently I can't have my engine full screen and still be able to see the app. So I am going to run it and it'll pop up here. So this is what it looks like. It's a little pixelated looking, and that's just because of the test parameters, I guess, of how the screen resolution looks with this test. It looks a lot better on a phone. But if you know anything about crochet, which you may not, that's a hobby I just fell in love with uh, outside of programming, and it's a lot of fun. But there's a need in a lot of crochet projects for counting the number of stitches that you do. Uh, you want to keep track because every row you're doing a specific number of stitches. Those number of stitches may change. Uh, so it, it's nice. Uh, to be able to keep track. I don't personally use a stitch counter really that much, uh, but a lot of other people do, so that's kind of why I, I blasted out this project over the course of a weekend. So the, the whole idea is that you're just counting things. So we can hit the plus button. The number goes up. If we needed to go back, we could go back down. If I hit the reset button twice, we'll reset that to zero. Uh, there's like a little pseudo prompt where it says question mark, and then you click it again, and then it resets if you hit it twice. So this is the basics of the stitch counter. You just count up, reset it, and that's great. I added some options to include some more complicated counting with the stitches per row and the row count. So we could say, okay, I have five stitches per row, and I have three rows. So then when we start counting up, and we can get rid of the options, then when we start counting up, every time we finish a row, our row count goes up until we finish the project. So that's pretty cool. That works pretty well. This reset button, if I had stitches up here, if I hit it twice, it'll reset the main thing. But notice now that we have these pulled up, the reset gives a second prompt. So we've confirmed that first prompt, and then there's two question marks. So that's just a weird little thing that I put in with, with multiple prompts. So really, it'll go all the way to three. So if we have this, I can do once, twice, three times, and then... Uh, I guess that's the fourth click, and it clears everything out. So we can either clear out our progress or clear out everything and kind of start from scratch. So I kind of like the way it looks. It was just a way that I try to keep it minimalist without having a lot of prompts come into the screen and say, oh, are you sure you want to do this? Just throw up these question marks, and, and hopefully people will kind of understand. So there's also some saving functionality. I'll talk about the color in a minute. There's some saving that people have not really liked. They don't, I guess maybe people aren't very clear. So I made it where you would hit the save button and then you would have to click the save name and then you could type in something like test and then it would save. And then when you hit load, all of your saves come up. So uh, little test, other test, test, ASDF, Jeep, apparently. And then you can delete things. And it works okay. I think the saving functionality works pretty well. If I click these, since I'm on load, I can click these, and you see I, I start pulling up progress. Most of these are zero, I guess. Uh, but see, that one has some saved data in it. 
Uh, it works pretty well, but it's not very user friendly. I found that people, at least from the reviews that I've gotten on the app, seems like people are more fans of either auto saving or just maybe one save file and just make it very simple. I hit save. Now it's saved. My original idea was that people could work on multiple projects at the same time, but I feel like a lot of people are hitting the save button and they're never typing in a save name and then they say, oh, I lost my, I lost my save uh, when maybe they never saved in the first place. So it's kind of on me because it's not a great user experience. The other issue is that maybe there's some permission problems that I didn't know as much about with the way that the things are being saved and it's actually just not saving on their phone. Uh, whereas it saves on mine and all the devices that I tested on. I tested on at least four or five different devices when I developed the app, and I was able to save just fine. And now, uh, I don't know, who knows what the issue might be. So the last thing that I put in here, oh, well, this is pretty cool. So let's get rid of these. When you click up by one, it just clicks up. So uh, by one, it's just incrementing. But we can change that to plus 5, and then it'll go up by 5, and we can change it to plus 10. Then it'll go up by 10. And that's pretty cool. And it still works with all the stitches per row and the rows. Uh, I realize I'm spending a lot of time describing this app when you probably don't care as much about the crochet aspect as you probably do the, the actual code for the app. So I added in all these different colors that the people using the app would be able to switch to. Just as kind of a cool way to you know, add a little bit of customization. I like a lot of the different color combinations, but I couldn't settle on one specific one, so I said, oh, why not give them the option, and then they can just do it themselves. I really like the light blue, personally. I think that's what I've used it on, but you know, there's some that are easy on the eyes, and I kind of wanted to make sure that hopefully one of these combinations would be uh, a little more friendly to anyone that was using it that was colorblind. Uh, so the black and white maybe would be pretty surefire uses. So. That's the idea behind the app. That's pretty much all the functionality. I worked on this for one weekend. Uh, it was like a Saturday, Sunday kind of project. And then Sunday, most of the day Sunday was just spent trying to get it onto the Play Store. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I will go through. And like I said, there's no monetization. I didn't charge for that app. There's no ads. It's just a fun little free project. And then I posted it on the the crochet community on reddit along with a photo of a of a blanket that i was making and it kind of got pretty popular uh, a lot of people downloaded it and that was awesome but so the code let's move to the code i've got things split up you, you have to bear with me a little bit because there is a lot in it and it's like i said it's been a while since i worked on it the main idea i don't think this is the main i guess it has to be so uh, that's what i'll talk about the first the first thing that I wish that I had done, I think it might have been better if I had not left everything in the same main scene. So everything's kind of in this app. You know, I've got the background, options, and then main, I guess. This is kind of the main functionality of the app. Options are on the sides, and then background's pretty simple. That's just the color rectangle. So everything's organized kind of well. But everything's loaded at the same time. So you see how I have like all these words and everything. They're all here on the side. They're just off screen. Same thing for these options. They're just off screen. And then the stuff at the bottom. How do I scroll? I'm using a different mouse. So I've got all this stuff at the bottom also just off screen. It's all there. It's all loaded. And then I'm using these movement tween nodes. Or, well, I guess they're just tweens. And then I'm using them as a position. Uh, or I'm using them to... It doesn't matter. I'm using them to slide things onto the screen. So uh, I guess I can show an example of that. It's just this function. I actually have a short video on exactly this, but we're interpolating the position property. Uh, so that's how everything moves. We're just sliding things into view. And that's okay, but maybe it would have been better to just load them when they were actually needed. I don't really know. There's some tricky logic in here for the some of the say or some of the the stitches and the rows like whether or not it's visible so i think if we hit like if we hit let's just take it step by step so if we hit the row counter button in here well these are these should be all the options so if we press options you know we have a lot of different states like if option states close then we're going to move everything into view so we're going to take the additional options we're going to move them over and we set our state to open if states open we're going to set it to closed 
So there's there's going to be a lot of that in this app. Like if save state, if not save state, color state, load state. Seems like there's a lot of states. And then row count pressed. So we're checking if it's if it's shown. I guess I didn't use a row state for this. Oh, I did. Okay. I do have a row state, but it's global. It's in my global file. And then it's just a lot of moving. Um, and then we're setting the row state. So the whole app kind of works off of states at this point. This is the the increment uh, function. I don't know why. Okay, I guess I'm setting the the stitch delta off of current delta, and we're kind of resetting. So this is the increment. I think this is where we're changing the increment value. That's pretty cool. So it's mostly states and movement here in this options press. Let's take a look at our saved, save press, save, but nothing happens because we're not in, so I'm looking for this, save button, save name, save name, file saved, ah, I think this is my, oh, it is in here, okay, so file name, it looks like we're doing a lot of the saving in global. So if I go here to save current file, this is kind of how I was saving things. I have another video on this as well, which is how to save simply with config files. Uh, and this is the whole this is the whole deal right here. So I'm just saving everything about what they've done. Uh, current stitch count, current row, stitch delta, stitch per row, row total, completed rows, and then we just save to that config file. And we have to track how many different saves we have because whenever we go to load, we have to make sure that we're loading based on the number of, uh, or it's not the loading so much as it is the, the deleting. We're going to go through the sections and we're going to erase a section if we delete a save file. Uh, so that's kind of the general flow of saving. We, we save to config file. We load from the config file by getting a specific section, and then we delete by getting rid of that section. So, okay, so I'm currently, I, I'm always checking row progress. If row state's true, then, uh, and we're, every time, every time, I'm assuming that every time we increment, we're checking our row progress. It's not happening in every frame. So maybe I should look at the main. So there's a stitch display. Oops. Stitch display. So stitch increase is if we press, we could press there or we could press there. I think both of those have the same signal where they say stitch increase. Yeah, so stitch increase button. Yeah, they both have the same signal. You could either press the number or press the plus button. So if we go here, stitch increase, it's very simple. We just increase it and we're grabbing whatever the stitch delta is from the global. We increase that number, and it's just a label, uh, or it, I think the label constantly checks for the current stitch count from global, and then it updates, and then we call check row progress. Yeah, so we're not calling check row progress every frame. Uh, we're just going to call it whenever we increase uh, the stitch, and then kind of the same thing for uh, the stitch decrease. I don't know what else I want to look at. I, I realize this isn't a super... Great. It's definitely not a tutorial for creating a mobile app. I just kind of wanted to walk through some of the code so that when you when you go to the GitHub and you look at the source code yourself, you'll be able to maybe navigate it just a little bit better. I would recommend spending a lot of time with the, the save functionality because I think it works pretty well, especially for simple applications. The color buttons are pretty simple. They're just buttons with labels. Uh, if you click it, we just, we're just grabbing... Uh, or we're changing the the RGB values of the text and the RGB values of the background. We're changing that in this global file, and then we're saving the colors. Uh, so I can look at that save color function. This is another config file for the colors, uh, and we just save it. And then whenever you click a color, we're just going to load it. Uh, th that's essentially the load. Well... I think the load colors is what happens when the app first loads. So we check the config file for whatever colors have been saved. Just trying to let people set a setting and hopefully it'll come back up whenever they open the app again. So we're not saving the colors when we click it. 
so that we know what the colors are. We're saving them so that the, the user could, could load them back up, essentially. So that's going on in the global. Yeah, I should have showed this earlier, but this is all the stuff that we are saving. And we do keep it in this global file that I believe is auto-loaded. That way it's, it's kind of always present no matter where you are, even though we only really have one scene, uh, the RGB values, and then all the load mode, delete mode. I don't know why I separated some of the different states. Like it seems like I have, like I have row state here in global, but there were others that I did not have there. I just have them local to this file. Um, I'm not sure exactly why I did that. This was some pretty tricky logic. I, I don't know a ton about this because I kind of threw it together just for this use case, but this is where I was, this change text colors function is where I was overriding the color for the, the text in the background. Uh, well, I don't know if I do the background here specifically, but it was just, I'm essentially stepping through everything. I go through all nodes. If it's a label or a line edit, then I add this color override. I'm overriding the font color, and then I'm creating a color, and I have to get the RGB value of whatever whatever the current color saved is that we have in the global. And then if in class it equals line edit, so apparently even if it was a label, maybe it could also be a line edit. I'm not sure why there's this nested if. I'm not sure why that's like that, but it must have something to do with the order of the label and line edit. And then if in get children. Okay, so yeah, so if it has children, so if we change one, if this node is a label or a line edit, but it has children that are also label or line edit, or if it has children at all, apparently, then we then we call this again uh, and we throw this node into change text color. So that's pretty cool. It's almost like recursion. Uh, that so that's that's a pretty neat little function. And I, I think it works pretty well whenever you click the colors. The that's a that's just a text field for when you type it in, and then this this signal is just when text is entered. Uh, so you would hit the enter button, and then it would then it would fire off to that function that we looked at before, where it saves the file. The co like I said, the color buttons are just those. I mean, most of the stuff in this app are just buttons and labels. Stitch per row increase. Yeah, these are all just. Increment, decrement, increment, decrement. Those are pretty simple in this row counter. I should probably cut it. I, I should have put a lot more time preparing to walk through the code, but like I said, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a high level overview. Uh, I could definitely make a more complicated video on it in the future and kind of a little bit more structured, but I just wanted to get people familiar. If you're interested in making an app with Godot, then I would highly recommend it. I had a lot of fun making this one. It didn't take me that long. And that's kind of evidenced by maybe the, the kind of amateur look of kind of the organization of things. But I knocked it out in a day or two, just kind of piecing things together. It's mostly buttons and labels. So uh, it's a pretty simple project. Uh, but a lot of people did enjoy it, and that was a really good feeling. Even if it's a free app, and I'm not really gaining a lot from it, it's, it was a great experience. Uh, and I would recommend people to create an app and then just go through the process of uploading it to at least Google Play. Uh, I think it's $25, uh, so it's not crazy for the for the upload uh, fee. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy this video. Hopefully you enjoy things in this kind of realm. Uh, hopefully it's encouraging if you have an app in mind. Uh, if you if you do work on an app, I'd love to see it. Maybe leave a comment and let me know what you're working on. And if you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button. And hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.